I think anticoagulation therapy and taking it and, and, and knowing how to take it properly um, without skipping doses, medication adherence are all important concepts when we think about stroke prevention in patients. Not taking medication is one thing the patients may cite in the clinical visit. Certainly cost is something else. Um, access to care and renewal of prescription and underserved populations are just some of the reasons, or just not knowing when they run out of their prescription that how important it is not to skip a particular anticoagulation medication. I'd say it's pretty much for everybody, certainly the elderly in particular, so as they age with multiple cardiovascular risk factors in place, um, you know, we, we want to, you know, look at them carefully and see as they're aging in place that their quality of life is maintained, but what is their risk for stroke, knowing their underlying cardiovascular risk factors. I think we look at the comorbidities one by one and we just look at that individual patient and you know we look at them, um, we look at their diabetes, we look at their risk for falls, we just kind of um, look at the family support system, the other things that they have or have not in place and really make our best um, clinical judgments. With anticoagulation, like depending on the type of surgery an individual might have, we might hold a certain medication. There's certainly bridges and different things that we can do with some of the novel um, agents that are now available on the market. So that's, again, I think a call that we make looking at that potential patient, what's the risk for a bleed or what's the risk for having um, an adverse outcome. But we try to gauge it around the surgical procedure and obviously contacting our surgical colleagues and getting their advice on management. I think it's a team-based approach with everything. Um, you know, again, it's um, you know surgical team speaking with the cardiologist, speaking with the nurse practitioner, speaking with the family, ensuring that the patient really understands what to do and when to do it is critical. I think practitioners are able to provide that, you know, at many of our other, you know, uh, community-based hospitals, outpatient clinics, you know, private practices. Um, people are understanding. Uh, atrial fibrillation, um, how common it is. We really are seeing more and more of it with the aging of the population. So um, practitioners are, are, are getting educated on it and seeking education to know how to manage their patients. Again, I think it's going to be prevention and certainly, you know, some of the initiatives like the American Heart Association's Life Simple 7, um, taking an active role in physical activity, weight management, um, eating right, um, certainly starts with our children in um, places like schools, you know, all of those things will help the epidemic of cardiovascular disease and the burden of the risk factors that this nation is dealing with. I think as a nurse, I mean, we are the most trusted healthcare professionals. We're right there, boots on the ground, front line with the patients. They feel very comfortable asking us pretty much anything. Um, we're able to kind of gauge their body language, really design a plan of care that's customized for them. You know, they'll tell us, no, I'm not going to do that, or that's not going to work for me. So, you know, you listen. We're active listeners, and we'll, we'll try to do the best that we can to really um, make a individualized, personalized uh, health care plan. You know, we're entering the era of personalized medicine, but I think for many years, nurses have always provided personalized health care. Columbia is a special place. It's um, cutting edge. It's always been um, innovative. We have the greatest minds. It's a major academic medical center, but with that goes the best clinical care, um, the most advanced cutting edge research going on on a daily basis. So being exposed to that, being part of that is, is why Columbia.